Welcome to our Scar Speak. My name is Christina Miner. I am the host of this podcast. And before we begin, as usual, I like to give a disclaimer that we are not claiming to be medical professionals or any other type of professionals to give you any type of medical advice or suggestions. We're merely here to share our stories and to share our lives with you. Um, and we're not being held liable for anything that's discussed here today. And without further ado, tonight we have Valerie Sanchez. She is a filmmaker, independent filmmaker. She's working with Project MTFM. I'm not going to continue to tell her story because that's what she's up here for, but I'm excited about having you on tonight. Thank you so much, Valerie. Thank you so much, Christina. Like, I, I love this, your, your program. I watch it with Stacy the first time and I'm like, oh. Yeah excited to yeah good 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 I'm glad to have you and you know how I do before we even get into anything can you tell the audience who is Valerie okay well <laughs> Valerie is this 27 years old media producer uh, that was born in Venezuela and moved here about eight years ago so um, basically, as before I ever was a media producer, I always was like into art. I went to so many different uh, art school and, you know, dance. And I always had exposure to all kinds of arts. My mom was like big in, you know, putting all this uh, different activities after school. But I really never stick to anything. <laughs> I was like, I love music, but I was super, um, you know, another person that will dedicate. I, I prefer to be outside and play and stuff like that. Uh -huh. So I was like more of a child that likes to play more than, you know, practice a, a <laughs> violin lesson. <laughs> I was like, I love the concept, but I never, you know, pull through it like that. But when I was like around, I don't know, say 10, 11, I got my first camera, digital camera. And I'll be super obsessed. We always take pictures of like even my toys and stuff. Like I always was, had like a, a way with the camera, um, but not nothing like, nothing that I was aware of, you know, like just right. like a toy for me. Uh, but I always been like, a, like an absurd band, you know, like a person like yeah. when I was Kid, my mom would tell me yeah you used to play by yourself you know like I'm like, like that kind of like kind of an introvert but you know right. I, I just like to observe the world and with camera it's fun because I could just focus on one thing and another but just wow. until later on um, I was already in the university so I graduated high school around 16 so at 17 uh -huh. I started um, I was like I want to study something that has to do with this. And my first idea um, was studying uh, sound production. So that was an idea I had for some reason, my mom kind of mentioned it that she wanted or something like that. And I was like, well, mom, when I graduate, I want to study this. And she's like, no, you're not. She's like a professor <laughs> in uh, uh, the university of my city, which oh, is okay. Merida, Venezuela. And she was like, well, no, you figure things out here because you have all the possibilities and it's super, really good university. So uh -huh. I was like, well, I started searching for careers and stuff and I found audiovisual production and I was like, oh, that sounds fun. And then I went through, you know, the curriculum and I find out that they have photography and sound and I was right. like, well, it seems it's like that is what I'm going to be doing. So I studied super hard for applying to the university. I got in and the first day of school, they're like, hey, welcome. Uh, this uh, is called uh, audiovisual production, but we're actually a film school and we're just renaming the career. And I'm like, oh. what? Film school? I never <laughs> really heard my my background my mom is an engineer is a very creative person right. um for my dad's side it's like more towards business I didn't I didn't have like a, a person in my house that would be super like artist or a filmmaker right. or anything like that so 
I was kind of like uh, the weird uh, classmate that was kind of lost. I'm like, everybody had to, you know, knew a little bit or their parents were somehow in the medium. But anyways, I just loved everything I did during those semesters. And one of my favorite classes was photography. And we learned um, documentary, black and white documentary. Mm -hmm. And so I had, you know, like this, that was when I learned that you could tell stories through photography, you know, oh, uh, I think okay. my, my teacher was very like, he is incredible. And he kind of like was that person that I looked to up for, you know, being so sensible, like not only right. a servant, but also will tell stories that are, you know, I remember a lot, a project he did, um, um, kids with uh, no sight and uh -huh. kind of make a, a series of photography kind of with playing with lights and how you know a blur vision would look right. you know not, not like a perfect crest picture and right. I thought that was super cool and I was like wow I love this but that was around 2013 yeah, I'll so let me 13. ask you a question. Let me ask you a question real quick. So you came from Venezuela, correct? Yeah. So did you go, so you didn't, obviously it was eight years ago. You say you're in your twenties. So I'm doing some calculations. So you went to school, you went to school in the States or. Yes, I you, okay. But I started. And you started uh, over in Venezuela there, with the yeah. love of film. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I was like, Hey, life just put me on this track. I love yeah. it. But soon uh, I was in second semester and I had to, you know, make a decision to migrate here. And mm. it was because, you know, Venezuela was in such a bad time that, you know, we had basically like a cold war where we were stuck in our house uh, for a while. And it was a, a really hard time and the time where, you know, my sister and I, for being the young of the family, uh, we realized that, you know, the, the, the future looked really dark at the moment. And we had right. made a decision. Uh, a lot of our friends were leaving the country and we were wow. one, like, one of those that were like, okay, we have an opportunity. My, my parents right. would support our studies here. And then when we came here, my grandfather yeah, used to live here for longer than we did. Uh -huh. um, so we kind of arrived and we were, you know, the uh, first month was with my, my grandparents. But then, you know, we, after I had to just do my thing. And since Venezuela, my goal always was studying. And for me, uh -huh. it was very important you know finishing a career and stuff like that so that was kind of my goal since I got here but so you know like migration oh, and everything is hard you know to put all in the same thing so when you were in Venice Venezuela I'll get my words right sorry I got a cold going on tonight. <laughs> um, so when you were there I'm just I'm just curious because it seems like you picked up the love for film or your camera while you were there, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you were there and everything was going on and the transition to the United States and all of that was going on, considering you were so young, did you do a lot of picture, uh, taking a lot of pictures then? Because I know sometimes like for me, I'm a writer, like I love to write, I love to speak. And sometimes when something's bothering me or I can just go out and take a walk and get inspiration from my surroundings, was that like the same thing for you, even though you were in some trying times over there before you came to the States, did you use your camera in that sense to kind of express yourself as well? Absolutely. I want, I, I love my camera. Like it was, I don't know, one of the dearest near things to my heart because it like kind of saved that young little Valerie with 18 and big dreams to kind of right. went through, you know, a new society, a, new, a whole different amount of new problems, you know, like I had to yeah. deal with that. I had my family separated. Thankfully, yeah. I, I moved here with my sister and she always been my core, but um, 
other than that, like I think photography kind of saved me from from being depressed and things like that because yeah. of course, when I got here, you know, you know, I couldn't even speak really well. So you know, to get a job, right. it would be any job you could ever have, or you know, I like studying. And I paid my my school like working and you know, right. I don't have any debts and everything. But you know, like. Like it was a lot of work that I had. And I, I remember when I used to be a pizza driver, which it was amazing. <laughs> Best time <laughs> of my life. Yes, I would listen to music and, you know, have all this uh, time, uh, you know, having fun at the pizza place. I used to live in Melbourne too. But, uh-huh. you know, through those times, I was like, you know, I felt like lost a little bit, you know, right. like, I don't know anything here. I don't know if I really want to, be able to do what I dream of doing back there but at the same time I was like well you know like let me just take pictures and I'll go to the beach and I'll take picture of my sister and I decided to you know just practicing that and also through my Instagram I I practice a lot to keep on being creative and I think that really uh, after doing it for so long people start recognizing and then it was even a medium I could earn some money so I will be uh-huh. you know pizza driver and taking care of kids and walking dogs and all doing all those things but also sometimes I'll have like a wedding and I'll be like oh right. like I got a wedding it's like an extra money I put in my school and you know it was at some point it became an extra way to get money so I started thinking wow. well there's a career over here but I also as an immigrant and <clears throat> coming, you know, knowing that now starting life, you know, the compromise of like, you don't want to be broke and all of that. I was like, well, let me rethink right. what I want. And I was like, I don't want to be the f- a filmmaker. I know that that's a hustle. I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah, that was my first idea. And then as I go through, I went first for college and then I transferred to UCF. In the UCF, uh-huh. my idea was going for ad and PR, advertising and public relations. Um, and that was my idea. I was like, yeah, it's creative. It's something in the middle. Uh, there's a lot of jobs in that um, side. Um, I'm down. Like, I'm down to to explore that part. And photography sometimes is here and there. So I'm like, I'm still kind of put that on top of the things I'm going to learn. Uh, but I didn't get into the school like I took the test and everything and I didn't pass and I was like oh and I was so stressed I was so you know I I was like okay what do you want life from me you know like trying all this I've been trying so hard I had like good GPA and everything and then I went to talk to one of my favorite professors of the uh, advertising party relation program uh, her name is Joan. I think she's like a rock star. Everybody knows her when, as soon as you okay. mention that. Um, and she told me, but hey, but don't worry. She saw me there very sad. I'm like, hey, I came here all this way to study this. And I don't want to wait another semester to take another right. uh, you know, test and all, all of that. And she's, I told her, like, this is my vision. This is what I want to be doing. This is my portfolio. And she was so impressed that I had all that vision so clear that she was like, but what is your, have you tried applying to uh, the media production a, a mm. program? And I'm like, mm, yeah but I don't know it's like it was called a uh, radio and tv production but I don't know like you know radio tv that's old but then I realized it will soon change the name to media and then she's like mm. you should apply and I actually apply because I'm the kind of person to have plan a b c d e <laughs> so right. Right. My plan, <laughs> I was like I'm gonna start studying something yeah. this semester but I don't you know I apply for that and I got accepted for both for production oh, and wow. for administration. So when I wow. show her that I actually got in that program, she was like, "What are you suffering? You're perfect for that project. Just stop worrying. Trust yourself. You're talented. Go for it." And I'm like, "Okay." And then I kind of that was. I think it, my relationship with my career has been like always me trying to get out. And then my right. career being like, so no, we're meant to be doing this. <laughs> oh. 
yeah, it's, it's kind of been like that relationship. But yeah, I graduated last year, uh, media production. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it was That's a awesome. very nice ride. And I love the program. I love the teachers and everything. And so uh, I, I think awesome. I took the best decision. <laughs> Yeah. And the reason why I, I had you to go back a little bit into your past is because even though this is our scar speak and primarily about like breast cancer survival and those who are caregivers, but also individuals who we meet, we all have a story. And sometimes our scars that we've gone through in life, whether it be breast cancer, some type of trauma, it brings us sometimes to even our passions. And when you were talking, all I could think about was when I was a child and I was going through some abuse, sexual abuse from someone outside of my family, I did performing arts, like I would act. So when I heard you talking about the camera, I was like, oh, I wonder if this had, you know, if that was like a comfort for you and also like almost like a security blanket, like somewhere where you could go to escape from your reality, but also even maybe film or take pictures of what you're going through in your reality to help you kind of get through it better. And so when you elaborate on that, I think that's phenomenal because that's a part of your story. You know, that's a part of who you are as a person. So thank you for sharing all that. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. So you graduate from the college and now you are, how did you meet, how did you even meet Stacy? then? Was it at the college? I know all y'all are from the same college, correct? Yeah, we are okay. all from UCF. Uh, but it's funny, but we didn't meet at school. That was oh, okay. <laughs> my uh, last project for the degree, you know, they, they call it the, the capstone project, um, oh, yeah. was a documentary, which was Ink Therapy. So for that documentary, um, well, a little thing that I forgot to mention is that I also pursue a minor in cultural anthropology because okay. as I went through my, my own vision in media, uh, I noticed that I have a really like interest, curiosity in, in culture and, and also societies and you know human beings psychology and all of these things that you know makes us human right. and I had this conversation with one of my mentors who was a really good person and it was actually the, the tutor for that project um he was like well well I think you have a very interest in like documentary and documentary is a world where you should explore wisely because you know it's not like job security or something like that but it's something that is for your heart basically and if you're interested in knowing about society humans culture uh, all that I recommend whether um, anthropology or a sociology and I was like okay I, I like it I'm gonna explore in that and then I took anthropology and I fall okay. in love that was some like that was wow. actually the way I can put things together in my mind right. as being a servant and have that part of research so for that project, I was like, okay, there's like, um, they, there's called um, a small ethnology, they call, that is like, uh-huh. you, you study a specific group of people and you have to right. you know, come up with a, and a question and an answer for it. So, and this time they told us, okay, look for places that have culture. And the first thing that came to my mind was, tattoo stores because tattoos oh. have like such a cultural and like it's you can feel it because when you yeah. walk in a tattoo shop you'll find art and the, the type of like the elements that the way the right. people look the, the interactions they're they have a culture and that they're actually come from an underground movement and now yeah you know, it's, it's more standardized, but it actually is a whole culture behind it, you know, not, right. only, not everyone could have had a tattoo in, you know, 1970s, you know, like it would be 
a very specific thing. Uh, right. So I started digging in all the tattoo world and I have like an interview, a couple of tattoo artists, and I only wanted to hear about the perception of how it was to be that as a professional and, you know, like just curiosity, like how is right. working in that industry and stuff like that. And I had this conversation with a very knowledgeable guy called Danny. And Danny was like very facts and history oriented, but also gave me this little clue that I feel like he was the one who enlightened me uh, because I will right. be going to many different and just having a chit chat conversation with people around and just taking notes. It's like, oh, people right. talk about this. Oh, they have this in, in the walls, you know, like taking like very bullet points of, uh, you know, things that I observe in, in the places. But he was like, oh, no, when when I have a tattoo session, it's a whole time that you get involved with the person. Right. And he started talking about that. We touch in like the psychology part and then the identity part and then uh -huh. the art part and all those things like kind of start aligning for me that I decided to explore the idea of a tattoo artist being a therapist. So there right. to me that that was the, the name it's like a, a tattoo artist a new therapist you know that that uh -huh. was like my article but then from there I was like okay I did a little scout I found a um, tattoo shop near my house I had the conversation I was like hey guys I have a, this idea for this documentary and I want to make it uh, you know about this and they yeah. kind of, they align with me super well. And then this when this production comes to life. And then I start I put it on film festivals and I got selected in Orlando Film Festival. So in the second day of wow. screening, uh, I get a girl who comes to me after you know they play my documentary. I think it was three or four wow. in a blog. And a girl comes to me and she's like, hey, I love your uh, film. Can you send this film to this person? And she showed me a business card. And uh -huh. she's doing a project about tattoo and the medical. And I was so interested in what she said that I took a picture of that. And I was like, I will. And that was October last year. And I did not reach out until January because I forgot. Oh. I had so much going on that right. day. I took that picture and I immediately forgot about it. But then in January, I'm like, I need to get back to this person. And that person right. is Miranda. So when oh, I talked to Miranda, okay. I was like, hey, Miranda, this is a Valerie. I'm a media producer. This is my documentary. Um, I want to hear about your um, research and that was actually my interest was knowing more about her research not like an actual documentary already um, right you no know, if you like it blah 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 and she had this awesome answer to me. like she replied to my email so fast that I was like overwhelmed I was like wow and she wrote a super nice and friendly yes I would love to meet you let's try to meet up uh, I'm gonna watch and then after she watched she let me know that she loved it and we went out to get a coffee um uh, to talk about the research and I was like when she was talking I was like this research <laughs> is insane it's like it's something <laughs> that I wish I it would come up with you know and I was like well you know if you ever feel like but you want to tell the story of this right. thing that you're, you know, you're basically trying to change the world. And to me, in my eyes, um, right. if you would like to, for me to produce a piece for you, I'll be honored. Now that, that was my interest wow. in like, just to say, and she was like, do you think so? And I'm like, yeah, I think we can do this. And that was January. And then since that day, it's been all Till this now, yeah. Full of, effort and the same meeting she was like you have to meet my tattoo artist she's the sweetest she's the nicest we have so much in common and it was funny because like as soon as I talked to Miranda I, I found myself and her a lot and it would give yeah. me chills when I was trying to explain 
how big her project into my eyes was right. because you know I don't come from a uh, background in breast cancer I just know I always had this you know awareness about it I think right. like uh, I don't know it's like no close family I know somebody that's you know closer to somebody had and I remember the stories and it all was, was something that I had in my mind but my mom, my grandmas, any nobody close to me had had cancer, um, breast cancer. So for me to jump in this boat was kind of like to break the ice so hard yeah. because I was to, I had to study a lot and you know prepare mentally also for the stories I was going mm -hmm. to tell, you know, and. I feel like it's been the most beautiful and wonderful and vulnerable uh, yeah. the journey that I have had in my career so far because it's Can super you, external oh, to me. Yeah, it is. Can you explain, because some people may not know about the project. Can you explain about the project, the name of it, about the project, and then who Miranda is? Because mm -hmm. I'm not for sure how many people watch Stacy's um, interview. And so I want them to know, like, how you, obviously, we already know how you got connected, but, like, what is the project about? What's the name? And who's Miranda? And just tell us all Absolutely. the details. <laughs> well, Miranda is a very bright um, student of UCF program, the PhD of clinical psychology. And she's the main research um, of the project MTFM, which stands for medical tattoo and after mastectomy um in her study she tried to you know evaluate you know, within a you know standards of you know how much body distress causes you know mental complications and physical complications in um patients and on the other side of the project also, there's this side of the medical tattoo that is proven um, throughout, like, you know, the, the study so far that it, it really improves um, the patient's, you know, connection with their bodies. Right. And, of course, she is the person who will go straight to the facts and everything, but you know, uh, in my side, Miranda, I hope <laughs> I'm saying everything correctly, but you know, um, you know, that side of the impact of after mastectomy, how this relationship with the body is disrupt and then how a medical tattoo kind of helps not in all the cases, but right. a lot of cases, that part of like, uh, you know, reclaiming that uh, part of your body. And uh, she works, Miranda Proctor works uh, with Stacy, um, who is a really talented and amazing tattoo artist and dedicated right now to medical tattooing. And she does a really great job, you know, with all this car decoration or nag or yeah. you know, nipple tattoo. Um, and it's been just incredible for me to know about this, something that I consider as a director, but also as an audience, that is like, yeah. I have no idea this is happening. This yeah, because should, they should be known, <laughs> you know. Right, because you all are, y'all prayerfully, it will change the insurance companies. So what you're saying is 100% correct. Um, you have medical tattooing. Many of you all know that are out there that are breast cancer survivors. You have the 3D tattoos of the nipples. However, when it comes to having artwork done on our chest, whether it's flat or whether we have implants or whether we have the deep flap, that's not under insurance. So a lot of times we have to take out a pocket and go get these tattoos if we want them. But the tattoos, what they're trying to prove in research is how the tattoos can help us mentally um, far as, because sometimes people like art, you know, to kind of either hide their scars or enhance their scars, mm -hmm. but it is a way of us getting through the process of the trauma that we've endured with breast cancer and having to get all these surgeries. And with you all doing this documentary and hopefully, hopefully 
doctors and insurance companies will see it. It's one thing to do the research, which I think Miranda and Stacy and them are doing a phenomenal job with the research, 100%. But when you can bring in the visual piece of it, which you're doing, that makes it all the better because everybody's not going to read research, period. Yeah. We already know that. Some people can't I, understand I, it. Some people are not going to read it. I believe so in, the, in the yeah. art of the documentary. Uh, you know, we, we are now highly visually um, engage all the time. Uh, yep. Information is in the books for sure. Best information is in the books for for yes. sure. But not it's not the way people absorb uh, information right. these days. They're videos. They're fast videos. It's like a for me that I study how to make them. It's very crazy and frustrating. Thinking, oh my god, <laughs> they move so fast. You know, like. Technology yeah. is so crazy. But when you get to see a piece that educates you and some part and also brings up a thought, you know, an awareness, a, a little grain, you know, for me, that is important. And I think that the work that these girls are putting in is huge and is yeah. for the better. That is not even for Miranda, Stacy, or me. It's like super out of us is just for the community is for you know Absolutely. this people we feel for because not right. none of us had had you know some you know a situation that we have to be in there to understand how this thing should be important just for the fact that you're a woman you know and i'm yeah. like uh for me i was even uh this year it was the first year I decided to tell my gynecologist, hey, I want to see my breast. Like, I want to do a, a um, ultrasound. And she's like, why? And I'm like, well, I, I have a, do, can I? <laughs> I'm like, it was like, you know, like I was trying to kind of bring up the, the conversation of right. what do I have to have to check my breast you know and she's like right. nothing really you just have to let me know and I'm like well I'm letting you know that I want to know <laughs> and she's like okay not a problem and she did that and I was like I, I was so curious I asked her how many you know women my age ask you for referring and she's like literally nobody like nobody comes until they have the age or they're scared for somebody that is close to them so this I'm proud of you go and get it you know and I'm like oh yeah it's because we everyone when we listen to the topic we just walk away because we're so not into knowing that that could happen to you but then the first thing that slapped my face throughout you know this process was like statistics one in a woman get breast cancer and I'm like oh my god I cannot stop counting eight women and be like yeah. so that means that isn't a real situation it's something that somebody close to you god forbid um yeah. you know happened so for me it's like oh i needed to to know about this right now and as my career that as everything that happens to me like it picked me and now as my responsibility to put into art and you know, also knowledge of what they doing, but also, right. you know, I think that we're highly connected in the art, the three girls and, you know, yeah. us, we're like very connected to, you know, the expression, the, the healing, the mental health and the positive. And so those things are pillars for this documentary. Because when I was talking about that, I'm like, well, listen, I'm, I don't, I don't want to get stuck in the negative and the struggle right. uh, and the trauma. I want to portray these women after they went through it, after they have their breasts back, you know, after they feel better. Because that's that's a story I want other people to look up to you know and be like ah that's me yeah. I want to be identified with and I feel like a lot of things have been aligning because even the volunteers because you cannot cast for a documentary you just get whoever wants to tell a story right. 
And I had so many women reaching out that I was like, this is a need. This is no discussion. Like, that's why I was like, no, let me do crowdfunding. Let me try to make this project. Let me find new association communities because this is for us to help everyone else, you know? So, so yeah, long story short, it's been definitely Yeah, y'all are definitely number one advocates. uh, for, for us um and the research both pieces have to be both pieces are needed very much so with what um I know that they're trying to get accomplished and what they're the message that they're trying to get out I love the fact that your doctor actually worked with you because honestly truthfully the age that you are most doctors would tell you no because you're not the age and you don't have family history. So that usually knocks you right on out the box as far as even getting a test done. So mm-hmm. given that your doctor listened to you and decided to do it anyway, speaks volumes because that does not happen. So that's the reason why a lot of people are not diagnosed till later because it's not necessarily they don't want it. It's the fact that some of us complain in our 20s, but they won't give it to us because we don't have family history mm-hmm. or we don't meet the criteria. So legally, for insurance purposes, they can't give us any testing. So a doctor usually have to put down like you're adopted or well, you know, somebody was adopted or didn't know family history or something to kind of justify why they should be able to do this with symptoms. Yeah. So yeah, so given that you advocated for yourself, that's beautiful. And I love also how you're, even though trauma is something that many of us live with, even no matter how many tattoos we get or anything like that, I do like the fact how you're also trying to bring in the fact that yes, though, however, even though we may still go through traumatic situations and scan anxiety, that still these tattoos and the 3D nipple um, tattoos and all these different things can definitely help with us with the mental aspect and help us be able to go through every day looking at ourselves. Um, I think that's so beautiful how you, um, how you're portraying everything and how you all are just so together on this project and speaking for so many of us um I think it's beautiful I I just feel like it's it's a way you know if somebody you love comes to you and it's not in a good situation mentally and they're like I don't know I can't look at myself and right you didn't even know about this medical tattooing you could be potentially helping somebody you love yeah Yeah. very much just to suggest to go and probably just try it out you know um but just for not knowing you might not you know feeling on that person you love the most so i that was like kind of my mindset and also you know it's never late to open your eyes to situations like this because you know and spoiler free <laughs> but one of my <laughs> my volunteers kind of got in my mind super hard because she was not diagnosed but her family uh, she had like two generation breast cancer so she had oh. minimum like dot in a, a ultrasound and she was like okay remove it and she took so she didn't have breast cancer, but she went ahead and had a mastectomy. Yes. Okay, so we call those pre-vivers. Pre-vivers. Those. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, you're three times. Yeah. Three. You love your life. You know that people love you. Yeah. And that's what I took from her story. But they're from hers and everyone else. Uh, you know, the reach out was also overwhelming because, you know, right. you, you have young, um, Hispanic, um, yeah. like all of them without even saying, hey, the criteria to reach out to me is this. I was like, no, I'm good with whoever feels brave enough right. to tell the story. And that was only the that. one thing that I asked because I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah. Um, you're this uh, I don't know Uh this race and this age I want you your story no I just wanted like honest reach out and what I got from that is that not even one case is similar to the other it's yeah why different 
the ages, the lifestyles, everything so different yeah. that I'm like, wow, another fact that makes me think this is a uh, this is not about breast cancer. This is about an issue yeah. we women have potentially have. So you know, if you open up your eyes, you might be more conscious about it at an early age. So that is something yeah. I think as an audience for ladies my age, <laughs> uh, young age. Oh, um, but not just like you all are opening the doors, not only for for women, but even men, because men can have breast cancer too. So exactly. when they see the research and they see the documentaries, mm -hmm. like everything is going to be so impactful. And the main thing, oh, I just hope that the insurance companies look at it because that's one of our biggest things is because they don't want to cover it. It's not that the tattoo artists don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not that the psychologists and the psychiatrists and the counselors aren't seeing there's a need nor filmmakers, but it's just the insurance companies sometimes just don't, they don't see it exactly. sometimes. Yes, yeah, it so takes so powerful. much. It takes so much for change, but I told you, yeah. like, we'll do But it. you're definitely doing change, so that's good. We'll push it, and that's the yes. most part. Yes, so tell, um, if you would, tell the audience, like, what are some of the things that you all need from us at, at this point? Well, um, so for the first part of the documentary, we were able to raise some funds through Indiegogo, which is a specific page for raising for any kind of entrepreneur and also filmmaking, independent filmmaking. Um, so we listed our project and also that part was amazing because, you know, so far we have, yeah, we finished last Friday, uh, yeah, Friday Miranda's interview. And then we only oh, have yeah. one left. So with the money we uh, got from the first crowdfunding, we were able to kind of produce all the, um, the interviews. And now we are just opening this month. We just launched a second crowdfunding because we had a total, but it only gave you three okay. months to raise the money. Oh. So after the three months, if you qualify, you can go to in demand and people can keep um, okay. donating. But otherwise, you will be stuck on, on the three months and then you cash out the money. So um, the project, as I tell you, has been growing so much that we're now looking, I, I will say, yeah, I don't want to cut off any story. You know, I think right. stories are very important here. So it's looking like it's going to be a feature. So yeah. oh, probably great. we're looking at the plus 30 minutes. Uh, so if we make it to an hour, it's going to wow. be a full production, which I'm very terrified and happy for it. But, <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, we're taking that step. So we definitely need help for this uh, post production stage uh, because it's going to be it's going to take a lot of work. Um, we are going to team up. I'm going to edit some parts and, you know, we have we're building up a project because something special about this project too is that a lot of independent filmmakers that you know have their heart in and documentary as well felt really honored to be part of this and wow. uh, they're collaborating so we have collaborated for this I don't know five or six independents in in town and you know that yeah. it's been great of uh, and I'm so grateful for each one of them because they've been doing a great job, like wild, great job. Wow. So, um, for this side, I'm assembling the team for the post-production and that always takes a little bit of more time, a little bit yeah. more money, uh, you know, for the different stages you have to cross. But yeah, hopefully if we reach our goal, um, we're going to be able to, you know, have this out for next year. I'm thinking, you know, sometime <laughs> in, in yeah. summer or something like that. 
But um, yeah, that, that will be the, the best way to help this production will be go to Indiegogo. We have there different kind of way you can engage with the project. You can put your names on the credit. You can become an associate producer or an executive producer. And the whole point of this, if you're an associate producer or just your name of the credit or your association as well, is to bring that awareness of other people right. that exist, you know? Um, right. I would like to, you know, place some logos and have for at least a resources page right. where you can find other tattoo artists, other associations across the mm -hmm. United States or North America or even Europe, you know, that to let them know that I feel like this is happening separately at the yeah. same time, but they're like, they're not aware that that exists. So I, that's my way to kind of make that community behind the documentary because right. I like to believe that the people that support it is also part of the community. Um, because it means that you know, we better together, stronger together. And I yeah, feel absolutely. like when I, our first um, donor, the executive producer so far, she was the one who told me that phrase. She's like, we're better together. She put so much faith on this project on my side that, you know, like at this point, it's like, it's my baby. And the baby of someone else, you know, you know, like it's, it's a team effort. So yeah. we try to make the best we can. So that's why we're actually asking for money because, you know, production is not a <laughs> cheap not thing. Cheap. Not but, at all. But we've been able to so far capture like amazing footage and really good interviews. So I care for the story. And I'm going to push through the quality as well, because that's my job as a media producer. <laughs> can you explain, can you tell everybody, like, what are the levels? Like, what are the levels and for the different, because I know I went up there, I gave as well. And I'm putting it out there because I don't usually talk about what I do, but I believe in y'all. I believe in what you're doing. I believe in everybody who's a part of it. I believe in Miranda. I believe in Stacy. I believe in you. So Yes. And like I said, I normally don't say what I do, but I did it. Um, can you talk about the different levels? Like, I know I heard you talk about the levels, like you could be like far as a, a producer or, what, or a assistant producer and stuff. Can you talk about those levels and how much? Yeah, absolutely. So for having your name on the credits is $100. Um, they all go to the same kind of budget. We have only one more interview we have to produce. And then it will be for editors, for sound editors and all of that. So you have the option to have your name or your association name. Um, and then the associate producer is for $500. Then here we will disclose location and any logo. Uh, of your association or personal project, whatever you're working on your side. And then for executive, executive is also, well, in production is, you know, the, the person who give the biggest box, really. Right. <laughs> See, it's the same uh, producer role. If you have, of course, an overall access to how the production is going you know like you are in in contact with me which I'm the director and I'll keep you posted on like everything that we've done so far and you know also your logo your information the things that you know like I want involved all this person and that's why basically I want people that has to do with something or have their heart on helping this community right um because you know you can come from any background you can be a I don't know construction company but they care for it and then we'll make yeah. sure their name is there because they cared you know right. um so I feel also that this is a time where people are trying to help um associations and smallest things and um 
about, you know, the breast cancer month. And, you know, you have all these old corporations that they're selling stuff yeah. that you don't really know if they're going to do something with your money or not, or if somebody's going to get a benefit. I feel like this is a very intimate way to kind of understand that we're actually taking to your, you know, Absolutely. we're taking your donation for a, be a greater, a better thing. And you're going to be there like in the credits and feel like, oh, I'm doing something for somebody. And I think that yeah. makes it a little bit more special, more intimate if you really try to help somebody. Um, so that's why also we kind of wait for this month to kind of show a little bit and also you know for the donors and the people that have been following right. on the project we're going to start you know releasing some stills which is the photography we took, or you know just to make sure people see the process because you know if you tell them hey here's the money and then you don't let them see anything until next year they'll be like hey but are you really doing something yeah are you really doing it and i've been doing something since <laughs> but it's because I love it you know every morning yeah. I'm motivated to keep up with you know every participant to look for this and that and you know like for me it's joy but also I need to pay bills <laughs> so um it's is the reality but also well I, that's how I feel that you know you're you as a person contributing with money in this project is also very meaningful. You know, the people that are contributing with their story is important. The people that are helping right. produce is important. The research, of course, the, Absolutely. the, the input of um, the tattoo is important. So we or we we start now when I send out emails, I'm like the empowering family, you know, like I at this oh, point we already you. become like a whole, uh, you know, group, powerful group that wants yeah. something together. So yeah, it's an invitation for whoever wants to join us is we, we try to make it very personal. And, you know, this is the first time also I'm, I'm raising money for, for a project, but I think it all makes sense for, absolutely you know, for what it is, you know. Where can they find the what's the name of the uh, website or the link to go you and donate? Go, it's on Indiegogo, the main page, but uh, we have on Instagram where you can access that. It's in uh, the link on bio, and um, it's right there. And it's um, on Instagram, you can find us as Empower Inc. underscore documentary, and it will be the, the first one there um and there you can click on the indiegogo page and you'll find what we call the perks which is the name on the credit associate or executive producer and a little bit of the project itself like what it's about like a little bit of my background and you know what we are trying to achieve on this project itself so there's a little bit of the resume i love it so before we get into your word and your song, do you have, so Hazelnut Production, is that the name of it? Mm -hmm. Is that your production company? Yes. So I'm a... I just thought I'd throw it out there because I mean, I know it's not, because at the end of the day, it's something that you've created. It is, or you and your, I don't know who all created it, but I know it's a part of you. You can talk about it. And I just yeah. want people to know like what you're doing, like far as like not... The project definitely for sure, but then also about hazelnut. I thought yeah. it was such a unique name. <laughs> <laughs> well, hazelnut is a name that my sister and I come up with. Um, oh, knowledge. okay. And it, we always use it for uh, uh, freelancing. And then when we looked it up, the name itself it, it has to do with you know entrepreneurship and things like that. So we kept the name like actives in in the Florida <laughs> business. Um, so yeah. last year, well, I've been working remotely uh, for the past three years. And the beginning, I was freelancing video editing and then production, but it's always been freelance work. Uh, and then this year, I decided I had like a vision of what I want to be doing. And, you know, I have been 
actively applying for jobs too. Uh, but also I have this vision of what I want to be doing. And I will say, well, let me start hazing it. And it was super overwhelming because like I didn't know that, you know, I had to do so many things. But at some point I talked to a girl who is also from Venezuela and we had an, in, an internship together in an ad agency. And we kind of linked from the first day. <laughs> we're like, hey, oh, I love wow. you. And then it's like, yeah, we, uh-huh. we kind of were, you know, linked. But then she had her life. I have my life. And it was like, I know that she's a really amazing graphic designer. And I kind of messaged her to see what's up with life and to see if she wanted to join Hastenet. Because my vision on Hastenet is doing audiovisual production so commercial photography videography but also like very branded and have product photography oh. and all that which is the things that I love but also manage any kind of project that has to do with production you know filmmaking we have my, my closest group of friends that produce do filmmaking so I find I sometimes I find myself working in a movie set and stuff like that. So wow. I was like, well, let me just become a, this production agency. Yeah. Since I've been uh, freelancing, I kind of have my so awesome. main crew that I always work yeah. with. And so when I have a project, we hire each other and it's still like kind of a remote day. And I, of course my dream is to become an, an actual office and have a, uh, something you know uh, right there but as it is right now I work with uh, her name is Mariana which is the co-founder of Hasten It and the reason why it looks so beautiful in our Instagram and everything so uh, we're a really good team um, and just try to pull these things together she's actually going to be the graphic designer for the documentary as well uh, all oh, the wow she will ha- uh, take on that uh, but also, you know, we we try to grow our brand as, you know, two Hispanic Venezuelans, uh, entrepreneur and dream girls, because that's all we do all the time. Um, but yeah, like y'all are just dreaming. You're bringing it into reality. So <laughs> yes. I love it. And I want, that's why I wanted you to talk about it, because I figured it was a story behind it. But that's so inspirational, very inspirational for people Thank who... You are here and even in your country and other countries like that is for you to even do all which I'll get into later but for you to even do everything that you're doing now is just so inspirational so inspirational thank you so you have okay so I ask everybody all the time like what's your word what's the word that you can leave the audience but before we do that is there anything last anything else that you want to share before we end everything Mm -hmm. Or did you share everything? I want to make sure that you shared everything that you needed to. Yeah, I did. Just make sure you uh, do your donation from here to December. <laughs> That's the best important part. It started uh, first week of October. It's going to end first weeks of December. And that is something that I always get requests. That is the people that is being trying to keep up with it. And they're like, they keep forgetting. And it's like, hey, well, I was trying to uh, <laughs> donate and I don't see it anymore. I'm like, was gone. it was yesterday. <laughs> the last day was yesterday, you know. And, you know, I, and for me, it's like very, you know, it's been a whole learning also breakthrough asking for, you know, donations yeah. and stuff like that. It, yeah. it makes me very shy. So I'm not going to be like messaging you, hey, do you donate you know like I try you know keep that alert in my social media but I'm not the best of reaching personally out and be like hey don't forget to no you know that that is the only thing make sure you do it from here to the first weekend of uh, December so it's the first so what's the last what's the last day that they can donate I let me check Real I just want to make for sure just just so that way when I post your information I can kind of you know say last day for donations or blah 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 yeah it should be well it says here 40 days left but 40. I believe is the 
4th of uh, December. So December 4th is the last day. Mm -hmm. I will check on that and let you know after, send you a little message. Okay. Just, yeah, just, just to double check because I know on the page it tells you the days are left, but not, yeah. not really when it actually finished. So yeah, if you could just send me the exact date, then mm -hmm. I'll tag it on stuff. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> So before we wrap up, I want you to share one word and why that word that can encourage the audience, somebody out there who may be dealing with their own scars and wounds and something just to encourage people. Well, it's not just because I'm a media producer, but the, <laughs> the word I picked was storytelling. Um, oh, okay. I feel that you know, to overcome anything that goes through your life, you got to tell your story and yes. you got to transmit the things that at some point hurt you for other people, because we take yes. that information in and then we have a little light inside of us. So I think that every time you share your story, you're doing, you're helping other people and that heals you. So I feel like for anybody going through you know physical or just mental wounds like yeah. that's the best way to take it out of your chest because in your mind it sounds so hard and so uh, you know scandalous in your mind but sometimes other people will be much appreciating you telling your story and sometimes yeah. not telling your stories just because you're kind of shy for yourself or maybe not giving you the the right credit and I I'm a true believer that we have to give us the credit of our own lives you know you not saying that anybody other you know so but for me to tell your own story will help other people to see other light so I love it it's the best way <laughs> I love it. And so you chose a song that I absolutely love. I fell in love with it a few years ago. It's called Yellow by Coldplay. Mm -hmm. And can you share why you should why you chose that particular song? Well, in that song, two things. Yellow is my favorite color. So oh, okay. it is always a catchy song for me. But it has a lot, you know, when a song has a lot of meaning that you, yeah. you cannot just put in, in one thing, it reminds me of the people that love me the most, my dearest people, Aww. like my best yeah. friends, my mom, people, we link that song between each other. And we didn't even put like, oh, this is Valerie's anthem. But when they listen to yeah. that song, it brings memory. And when I do, it's the same thing. So for me, it's a song that connect me with my closest people, um, but also the lyrics of the song itself is is I don't know. Some sometimes it's the song that I want to hear to feel loved. You know, is oh, yeah. it's yeah. like they're singing like you're the most important thing in the world, and that's how you should sing to yourself all the time. You know, like. That's how you should treat yourself. And I feel like that is a very uh, remarkable part of that song is the lyrics because it makes me feel like loved, really. Not yeah. only because of I know the people that probably like reminds me that song, but it's, it's just how beautiful it is actually the lyrics. Yeah, I love that song. It just gives you so much like joy for me yeah. whenever I hear it. Uh, you know, it's like, I'm like it, make, it just makes you smile. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's awesome. So before we end, I want to share something about you. So as I'm listening to you talk, because I didn't know your story. I didn't know that you had come like only eight years ago to the United States. I knew none of that. But I did know one thing. I knew that you're in an industry, just like Stacy. y'all are in industries that are mostly mid-geared. Um, has been for years, like you said, the cultural background of things. And um, you're also not from this country, right? 
So all those dynamics together, that's such an inspirational thing. So when I think of you now, I think of inspiration. I thought creativity, but definitely inspiration because your story, like you're telling us to tell our story, please, I hope one day you write a doc and do a documentary on yourself mm-hmm. because it obviously needs to be heard because just with everything that you shared with us tonight inspired me about some stuff that I got going on in my life. Like, okay, if she did that, then I should be able to do this. And, you know, Hazelnut may not be where you want it to be, but it is what it is right now. And it's bigger than what I'm sure you probably even thought initially for it to be right now. So just know that it's not going to stop there. It's going to continue to grow and continue to believe and continue to inspire all of us, not just by our stories, but your story as well. That's why I kind of had you to go back and elaborate a little bit more about your story because it's such an inspiration. You have scars, mental and physical, that have now brought you to this place of beauty and you share it through your creativity and through your art. But at the end of the day, I just hope you continue to inspire all of us by everything that you do. So thank you so much. I love hearing your, (laughs) yes, I love hearing your story. Like there's just so many people who come over here and they have these big dreams. Uh, You know, America may be better than where they were, but it may not be once they get here, like they thought it was going to be. So then they have to kind of revamp some things or, you know, just starting a business. A lot of people don't know the back end of it, like your taxes and the county stuff and the state stuff. And there's so many different aspects to it. And knowing that you came from a whole other country, came over here and started everything from a vision is impactful. And people have got to hear that. Just like you're sharing everything about breast cancer, which I love, I dearly do. But please share your story because and don't glaze over it at all, ever, because it is so impactful. Like you really, really inspired me tonight. I know I'm stuffy and got a cold, but <laughs> but you have inspired me so much. Like you made me so inspired. Like I'm gonna get off here and start really writing some stuff down that I know I need to implement. So I thank you. I thank you 100% for this interview. And I thank you. I feel you have such a special energy. You make me feel comfortable and share of this. Uh, You know how it goes. Uh, I actually directed, and it's almost what you're doing right now. And so uh, a big portion is to make me feel comfortable to share that. And I know you're in a spectacular woman too. And your journey you were outspoken and I love that from you uh is is the way it should be um and you know I cannot thank you for for all your effort and for helping us too um yes thank you so much it has been a absolute pleasure thank you thank you thank you thank you So without further ado, this is the end of another episode with Our Scars Speak. And remember that our scars, our mental and physical scars speak a story, a story that can heal the wounds of another person. Were you supposed to tell your story? I don't know, but just know that it needs to be told because you truly can help another person out. And without further ado, this is the end, Valerie. I'm going to miss you. I love talking to you. It's like I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you right on social media. We can be here. Yes. Yes. I absolutely, absolutely enjoy interviewing you. And for everyone out there, just know that your stories are everything and create your own narrative and just share, 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 because you can definitely help heal the wounds of another person. And we love you and we'll see you again later. Thank you, Christina. You're welcome. Bye, Bye. guys.